We've got fresh wiring, especially these harness. Mm -hmm. Just hoping it has a quick release to help it get in the firewall. But, uh, well, it actually does. So, that'll make the job way easier. I think we'll do that tomorrow since we're running out of daylight. I have to scrub down the plantum. Give it a nice clean, at least refresh, so to speak. We'll flip it over. Get our coolant lines deleted. And we'll get this ready to throw on. Alright, so it almost looks complete now. We've got our plenum on. Just got each of the bolts threaded in. Nothing's torqued yet. Just want to make sure we're not going to mess up our plenum gasket. So, did my EGR delete. Got to hook up a couple of these hoses and just clamp down each of my coolant line bypass slash delete. Plenum may be a little clickbait. It's not the same plenum. Reason being is I had one that was already ready. And actually this one has a better idle air control valve. So mainly to have to avoid getting rid of all that. I just switched it. This is the other plenum. Of course I didn't decide this till after I got it cleaned up. Uh actually now that I remember the big reason I switched. This one has already been shaved for the new style injectors. I don't want to shave it because I don't want to have to clean up all the aluminum. Now, I'm going to get our coil packs in, get our fuel rail to be back there, get hoses changed out with this line here so we'll have full updated fuel lines. Got a balance tube o-ring set over there. Pull our... Uh, idle air control valve off too so we can give her a spray change our hoses and our gasket that i've just discovered but i'm here to remove the pilot bushing to install the one for the manual and i see this the oil pan is bent all the way back Never seen something like that before. I mean, I don't think it leaked oil. It had full, very dark oil in it. So, I, don't know, I reckon I'll be the one to figure out. Because, I mean, if it's not a problem sealing, then it's no big deal. But, I'm obviously going to change the rear main right here. So, We'll, get, we'll pull this out with our nifty little three jaw puller and then we'll get our plate on, flywheel, clutch, get those all torqued down and get to dropping this in the car all after we do the wiring harness obviously. Well we had a casualty <laughs> using this, could not get it out worth a hoop. So what we did, we took a screw hammered it in the top then you screw it in and there's this plate at the very top in the back that you can push it off of I've always had luck doing that and i'll probably do it every time now so that way i don't have to bust my hand like this tapped our uh pilot bearing in with our trusty old ratchet as you can see it's been done a few times also got our seal in, lubed up. We'll get our other bracket here, put our plate on, slap our flywheel clutch. Already got our alignment tool. Clutch and flywheel are on. Yeah, pressure plate looks rusty. It's been sitting in my barn for a while. Still not really that used. Got our harness out here but i totally forgot how much of a pain in the butt this is and there's a plate right back here that prevents you from just pulling it out so that leaves me to a trying to pry it out or b take the dash out 
pull the evaporator box from what I can, or if I can just get access to it. Oh my gosh. I just look over and see a whole freaking oil spill down here. That is fantastic. Got these couple surface area rust spots. We'll take some scotch Brite to it, wax and grease remove it, and then we'll spray some. Partial victory. I'm so happy. We have managed to snake this out of the firewall. Not sure how much damage that caused the harness itself by prying against it, but we've got it out. I've got the bar pried enough, or the bracket pried away enough that I should be able to snake the new one through. So we'll snake this the rest of the way out and get our new one in. Of course, I forgot to mention the best part. Our train wreck we've got going on here. So I've decided I'm not going to put the dash in just yet. I'd like to get at least the clutch pedal in the car. So here, literally just taking hammer and screwdriver, knock the plate back and hit the two spot welds and it'll come right out. Got our master cylinder and pedal installed. Now let's go get some B-dubs because it's Thursday. Then we'll come back. Don't look like much of a wreck. Got a bunch of interior all laid out. We'll take care of that in a minute. So we've been getting a little work done while our GoPro's been cold. Got most of the interior back in. I've just got my glove box area and the ECU driver sides area done except a new cluster hood that I need to look for. The I'm not sure if it recorded where I was trying to talk about it as GoPro was shutting off, it's too cold. I sprayed down the surface rust, the battery tray, you know, just a couple things with some rust converter just to keep it from rusting. Now we're just going to finish up our interior here on the passenger side. Got a wiring harness all ran. After we tear our tape off, be ready to drop this motor back in. I'll just go ahead and finish a little bit of the inter interior because today I still need to go and start chopping on this because I've got a guy coming this weekend for them frame rails. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go grab some food inside. We'll be back here, out here getting busy. Pretty much now, I will be cleaning up, wiping up the subframe get my battery tray cover back on and then, actually now that I see this I went ahead and sprayed this just for a little preventative maintenance uh, we're gonna drop the engine in try to fish our way in around this here AC so we can have AC still got all of our brackets on all the little things we've Got the rails cleaned up. I don't know, I'm pretty stoked. Ready to rock. Got everything already tucked, tightened down, wiped up. Go ahead and threw this ground in. Sometimes it can be annoying after the engine's in the car because the placement of these. So you guys seen me do it probably ten, five, ten times already. We're just going to drop it in. So now we've got our engine back in. I've got about all the wiring harness hooked up. I'm looking for places to zip tie the extra connections, whatnot. Um, I just also only have the map that is not routed. Still need to hook the trans up. Got my heater core lines hooked. Currently, what we're going to do is we're going to get our hard, fuel hard lines up top so we can connect these to them and get all the hoses redone. Just kind of freshen everything up. Um, other than that, we'll be jacking the rear of the car up so we can try to get the trans under after we pick out which one we're going to use starters over there 
Also, cannot forget our battery harness. Glad I remembered now because you do need one of the transmission bell housing bolts for the ground. Now that our fuel system and miscellaneous vacuum lines are hooked up, I think it's time that we jack the rear of the car up and get under it so we can put the transmission in. Because I can't install my intake pipes, it's too stretched back. I need to tighten my belts. Can't do that until I get my fan on. Man, night's coming a little too early now. But we're all hooked up. About ready to drop the radiator in, hook the intake pipes up, delete the carbon canister. What else? I gotta find a cruise control, hopefully. Still my cluster hood. I do got it lifted so we can get the transmission in. Good morning, and I am out of breath. So, we just got our five speed out from our little transmission stash. Just wore me out carrying down. But, it's a little dirty on one side. It's been sitting for a little bit. So, shit bunks of dusted it up pretty good has a slave on it i think it's good looks like an oem one and i already bought another one so i'll just take that for myself and yeah get our new slave on oh i remember this trans yeah that's my grease so Definitely needs a different throw out bearing. So we'll change that and we'll re grease that. Put our. No, we don't have a boot for this one. But let's we'll clean up the trans and we'll get to sliding her in. Got our new throw out bearing on. Still haven't opened up the fuel pump or fuel tank to know what the fuel pump's like. If it's rusted and that's why it doesn't work, it doesn't smell bad. So. I've got good hopes that I'll just be able to switch my fuel pumps out, whole assemblies from my four seaters, and go from there. I'm a bit dirty, but partial victory has been achieved. As you can tell, our beautiful gap in the firewall that transmission is in. All sensors bolt up. Uh, Starters on, toggle switch, power wire. Yeah, we obviously need to get our drive shaft in. I'm gonna get my shifter support out of my drift car back there. Get a shifter in this. And then we get our heat shield and exhaust on. Shifters in. Now, just gotta hook up the shifter, shift select rod, whatever you want to call it, to the shifter. Got my bolt here, I've got bronze bushings in, as you can see there, and I've also got this one stud right here. I've got a nut for, way easier to do under the car, you can do it by yourself, easy. Engine mount studs are on. Shifters hooked up completely. Drive shaft is tightened fully. Now, our next step is going to be the fun part. One of them, because it actually is very easy and a very quick thing to check off the checklist, fill it up with oil. And one of the crummier parts, fill the trans fluid. <laughs> Super quick tip for you. Lead your brakes or clutch by yourself. Top your fluid up. Submerge the bottle in, with a hose off your bleeder into fluid. So there's no chance of air being drawn back up in the tube. Crack it loose. And to bleed, you'll just pump your clutch. And you pump it until 
no more air comes out and that's it that's how you bleed by yourself now we're down to the unfortunate section of the car it's pretty crusty back here a lot of this is just the loose rust a couple holes and i need to get to the fuel pump of course so it definitely could be in a worse spot this fortunately is all in the same panel it could be easily repaired if it was in a joint panel it would be a nightmare so so we just pulled the fuel pump out applied 12 volt power directly to the source or to the fuel pump and it started spraying what fuel was left in it so it leads me to believe fuel pump isn't bad maybe just a relay could just be a fuse but i guess we'll just put all this back and we'll see what it does when we turn it over I do need to loosen up my shifter bushing. I always do that on accident. But we jump the starter relay because I believe it doesn't work right on auto to manual swaps. Um, so you just have to bypass it. Let's put a jumper cable in and we'll see if that'll allow it to crank. Yep. I'm going to wait a second and see if when I turn the key that I can hear the fuel pump. As if not, I'm still just going to go pull the fuse so I can crank it a couple times and build some oil pressure. So I think our next step is actually going to be to turn this over. I'm going to grab a vacuum cap for this. But other than that, I just need to add our accessory wire to our power wire. And we're going to start messing with the ignition and seeing exactly what's going on here I guess I do need to get a PTU in as well that stinks I definitely need to get a battery that has charge I feel like that's the main issue this is having, is it just has zero juice to crank over. <laughs> yeah, we in the money. Woo! I'm stoked. Especially the fact this thing hasn't ran in six years. Now that it's running, we're just going to reinstall our exhaust. At least we can do it one side at a time. Probably just bolt these up, lift the rest of the exhaust up in the front, and hook that up. You gonna help? this is actually going to be the end of this video i wanted to get all of this content in one video and try to just make like a kind of a cool video where i buy and completely renovate a car uh just this is kind of about my skill set not not i don't want to say it like that but this is something that i really know how to do when it comes to these like I mean, it's not anything fancy for sure. You're pulling a bunch of old stuff out and putting new in, resealing, changing gaskets. It's really nothing special, but I enjoy it. So this is kind of just 
more so a day in the life because this is what I do for a living. I like to flip Z's, buy, sell, trade, part if it needs be. But being this color, if no one else wants it, I'll make use of it. I've always wanted a gray Z and I mean, yeah, this one's got its quirks and still a nice car though, nonetheless. Got a handful of things to do. I could hear when it was running, it's got like a hissing sound. So I think we got a vacuum leak to sort out. Um, other than that, we'll do like the real diagnosing, getting everything to run right, get it to idle. Um, get our cooling all bled out, see if the heat works. Because it really didn't do this car any good with it sitting this long. Also, so we can see if we need to replace our hatch, the rusty parts. Just to really not restore it because it's not that deep. But refresh it, make it look like one whole car. And just make it look good. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video.